pretty good isn't it? First meal of the day and you're probably going strawberries with steak? What are you thinking Clay? Well you know berries with wild game goes well. This is not, this is uh, beef that's grown in New Zealand. It's grass fed beef not uh, corn fed or grain fed and the strawberries when they're just thrown in at the last minute they really enhance the flavour of the meat. I haven't actually had done the taste test and I don't think I'm going to get that in my, my mouth in one bit for the first bit. Uh, it's done very rare, like I like steak. I am salivating and I'm going to tear into it now. <laughs> oh. That is next level tucker. Another good berry is blueberries go really well with uh, game, meat. I learnt this trick when I was in Sweden. If you're Swedish you know what I'm talking about. The Swedes use meat dishes with berries. It's quite common over there. That's where I first had it. I was over in Sweden visiting my mate Arv. Now, the song that I play at the beginning of the, the video is uh, Rain, obviously. And there's two versions of that on my uh, CD, which is titled, what is it, Blues Nights and Reggae Days. Uh, so you can get that on Spotify, just listen to it. Or you can buy it if you want to, but just so I'll let you know. All the music on my videos is my own, unless I have a guest artist join me. That is good, Chomlin and Chum. Holy shit. 
Is that what I think it is? That's a fucking whacker. That is the first whacker I've ever seen here. We're going to give the guy some uh, steak. Let's put it down there. Going to get it. It's a whacker under there. Look, there he goes. He's going to get that steak. There you go, mate. That is the first wicket in the history of living here I've ever seen. It's a fussy bastard, isn't he? Steak. I'll be buggered. G'day mate, how you going? You can't be that hungry if you don't eat a bit of ribeye steak. You're a long way from home. First wicket we've ever had here. It's good to see. Well rain has stopped and it's just beautiful when the rain stopped and I can hear that wicker in the native bush just over here, so I'm stoked to have a wicker here. I'm gonna go and check the mailbox because my mate Stu Driver has sent me some wasabi and I'm trying to grow, I've got some that he sent me two years ago, but I'm gonna go down and check it because he said he sent me some more, so we go and check that, that's exciting. I've also got a whole bunch of other mail to open too, which I have yet to open. I sort of have to get myself psyched a bit because I, I'm not very good at receiving stuff, but I'm getting better, I'm learning. It just blows me away, but you know, right, we'll, we'll head on down to the mailbox. I reckon that week is somewhere in that native bush there. What do you reckon, mate? He's down there. Don't you chase him, will ya? And we have it. Gee, that was fast. What you looking at, Bruno? Hey, come on, boy. Let's go and open this up. Come on, mate. Good boy. Come on. A wee bit slow on the uphill, but going a lot better. Hey, come on, mate. Don't stop. Keep coming. A lot better since he had that operation. There's the scar on the side of his leg. I mean, you see that there. Come on. He's walking a lot better. He's an old dog, you know. He's into his 11th year. He's, he's 10. He's going really well. Got a lot more uh, life out of him than I thought I would. That's for sure. Still deaf in one ear. Got lots of lumps all over his body. He's got quite a lot of lumps. You can actually see them surfacing in places. There's one there right up by his neck. Got another one there. He's got one on his nuts. He's got that one on his head. But overall, still going, aren't you, boy, eh? You enjoying the rain, ducky, yeah? You're loving it, mate, aren't you? I'll tell you what else is enjoying the rain is my watercress that I've planted along here. I did this yesterday, and these guys, uh, it's working really well. I think it's going to be okay. I wasn't sure, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work. It's a whole uh, system made where the rain just goes down, and the last bit of water, well, Bruno's drinking that, aren't you, boy? Have a drink. Good boy, now it's going well. These uh, roots of this watercress hopefully will spread out and go along the bottom. That's what I'm hoping anyway. So that's the original wasabi that Stu sent me a couple of years ago. And I've got like one, two, three, four, maybe five plants now. And I've got some more. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take this stuff out when it's uh, grown, what's just about done its dash. Well that's seeded there, this is still, I'm eating that. But I'd like to make a, a special place for wasabi. I'm not sure where I'm going to grow it. I may even make a setup like I've done with that watercress. This is a hell of a, a decent thing to send me because there's a lot of work goes into it. I've got the, got the um, goose bumps running through me. I've become very fascinated with growing stuff and becoming more self-reliant since COVID-19 locked us all down. What have we got in here? Beans, bro. Thank you, Stu. We're going to grow some beans. Woohoo! Didn't expect this. Fire dragon chilies. Drunken dragon. This is hot stuff. Stu is the master of, like, you know, hot, hot shit. And here we have it. Oh, holy shit. This is brilliant, man. All these plants are going to be so careful. Oh, that's a. Is that a ginger root? Or is that a wasabi root? Is that wasabi? Is that a wasabi root there? I've never dug mine up. I've always kept growing them. Is that wasabi? Is it stew? Fuck if it is. You know, wasabi is worth $250 a kg. That is a lot of wasabi if it is. I don't know that it is because I've never seen it, but I'm pretty sure it looks like a little man. Look, he's got little arms. He's like, ha ah. ha. Actually, it's a little man with a phallic symbol. Sorry, I mean, didn't see that. Right. We've got more here. Is this wasabi that he sent me? Is that wasabi, Stu? <laughs> you fucking beauty of it is. 
Holy shit! I'm gonna treat these plants with care because they're just little. Oh man, he's such a such a good bastard. So stew. There we go. There it goes. Look at that. Stu is the number one good bastard. When my channel only had like less than a thousand subscribers, he was looking after me. He was sending me plants and, and all sorts of stuff. Oh, look at this, man. This is just brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in water first because it's been in the post for a couple of days. We've got some more there. I'm going to put it in the water. That, I believe, is the wasabi, the root that he sent me, I'm sure. Do I plant that or do I use that to, to grind up to make wasabi for eating with fish stew? And here's some more he sent. Man, what a fucking legend. Honestly, man, what a legend. Oh, this is just brilliant, man. This is just so, so valuable. Oh, man, this is, took so long for me to, took two years to grow. I'm going to put that in water just to help these guys um, get through. Some fresh water. Get a fresh water. I'll leave them overnight just so they hydrate. And um, we'll plant them out. I'm going to think of a system, a way to plant them out. That's cool. And look at this and beans and some hot sauce Stu you are the man thank you so much bro thank you so much just a little bit about Stu he lives in the Catlins he's a farmer he's the most awesome person you've ever met he's like about oh shit he must be 150 kg easy or maybe he's lost weight since I saw him last but he's a, he's a fucking giant he's a viking you know he's got a big beard uh, he's really really good at growing stuff he's a good farmer he's a good dad He's a good, he's a husband to his, his lovely wife. He's very, very generous. And his home is very much like my old farmhouse used to be before it got renovated. It's an old place and it's a real home. You go in there and you know that it's a home. It's not flash. He hasn't got flash stuff. And, but what he has to got is he's got a fucking massive fucking heart. Like it's right out there. He's a, he's a beautiful person and I, I just, a real person. No bullshit. Straight up. He's taking me hunting, and yeah, I'm going to go and see him again. He's in the Catlins. Just filled up this uh, dog drinking bowl with fresh water. I don't really want to dilute the uh, the dirt off the roots too much, but I want to get it nice and hydrated because it's been in the post a while. And what I know about wasabi, it's a little bit like watercress, is it loves to have loves to have lots of water. And this is going in my fridge. I'm going to do some research and find out how you make that, I'm pretty sure you just get one of those cheese, um, very fine slices and you just like, get the paste off it for for um, doing your wasabi paste. Absolutely delicious with sashimi, you cannot do better. It's completely different to that, I'm salivating thinking about it, it's completely different to the uh, wasabi you buy that's, you know, in the shops, that stuff that's really bright. This is the real deal. And as I said before, it's about 250 bucks a, a kg to buy it. Uh, which I could never afford, but growing it, yes, I can do that. And man, that's a good start, bro. That's a really good start. What a what a fantastic, fantastic gift. I cannot wait to get these guys going. Oh yeah, I've got them down here. I'm gonna pop a rock just on top of the roots to keep them under water, just to keep everything down, nice and hydrated. I'm gonna keep that wasabi in the fridge. Yeah, what I've also got in the fridge is I've got these two things that have been sent to me. I wasn't sure if it's food or not, so I just put them in the fridge to keep them cool. I know, it looks like a kitchen knife, doesn't it? But no, in fact, it's a Japanese butcher's knife. It needs a little bit of attention. It's a high-carbon steel knife, razor sharp. And I'm going to use that to first of all open this one here. It's been in the fridge for about a week, so hopefully it's um, not uh, something that's too uh, perishable. Because it has, it's cold, but... Uh, smelling it. I don't know what it is, so who, you know, who can say, but uh, it's got bubble wrap around, so maybe something's breakable. Holy shit! It's another... Well, I didn't expect this! It's, it's, it's not a... <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Mate, you didn't have to. This guy is the best knife maker, in my humble opinion, in New Zealand. Bro. I'm speechless. Simon. Simon, Simon, Simon. Holy shit, I was not expecting this. I thought it was food. I thought it was some, there's no name on the outside. You tricked me, you bastard. I, I'm shaky. I'm actually literally shaky. 
far out. I'm going to calm myself here for a minute. Fuck me, I didn't expect this. Oh, man, this guy. So he, let me tell you a story. He's a male nurse, or he was, for years and years and years, but his passion and his, his expertise, he's a bushman, he's a hunter, but he's making knives, and he makes the best knives. I'm speechless. Swedish steel, high carbon, the best steel. He sources everything. He puts everything under pressure. He makes his, a lot of his handles are out of mat eye with a fine resin in between, and his, his workmanship, he's not just one of these guys that makes knives by grinding a piece of steel. He does the whole lot himself, and... I'm, I'm really hyped up here, man, I'm, and I'm shaky. Fuck it hell, I'm shaky. Oh, bro, you wait till you see this, because he makes his own sheath as, as well. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, Simon, man. Jesus. I'm just... Oh, it's cold because it's been in the fridge. What have we got here? There's the lanyard. What are we pulling out? What is this? Look at this orange handle. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful. Holy shit, that feels good. It actually looks like my custom-made knife, but it's got this here. Simon, there's no note, there's nothing. What have you done, bro? Look at this. Razor sharp, razor sharp. That is high carbon steel, I can tell, because he's oiled it. He wouldn't have oiled it if it was uh, stainless. Oh, mate. Bro, you are an absolute champion. Are you still making knives or not, Simon? You told me that you... Couldn't make a living out of it. It was too much work for the mount. Look at the workmanship of this hand. I'm just going to zoom in here a bit. Look, look at this here. Look at that. Oh, look at the handle. This is just beautiful. Far out. I'm, I'm just stoked. What's the handle made out of? It feels different. feels very cold because it's been in my fridge for a while. Oh, bro. Man, this is just unbelievable. You could not give me a better... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Something in here. Let's read this. I don't know what's going on there, because I thought he was quit. Uh, please read this for yourself. This is not for advertising. Okay, mate. Okay. I'm just going to pause and, and read the personal note, okay? I am so incredibly moved by this. In fact, I can't really put it into words, because those of you out there that know just what it takes to create anything using your own creativity... And how much work goes into it. The hours that have gone to this, the hours that have gone to this, not only the hours, but all the pre-work. Um, this is a custom-made knife. It's, it's The blade was under, my, it's basically a stick knife, but also got the drop tip so you can field dress. Simon only ever made four of these, um, plus a prototype, which I gave to Ezra Hansen, who's a knife collector, and a guy with his own channel who's uh, got a terminal illness. Uh, the other three knives were gifted to young fellas. Last year, none of our boys reached the, the certain criteria you had to get to get one of these. The closest we had last year was young Jody. Uh, but he made a few mistakes, and he missed out on a chance. And it's really hard to get one of these knives, like just about impossible. I would never, ever sell any of the ones that Simon's made me. Um, I would only give them to somebody who really was, I felt, really deserving. And they've got to really be earned. He is not doing them anymore um, commercially, so you can't buy one. And I'm sorry to say that. Uh, that's all I can say about that. Although, I, they are out there. So if you have a Simon Walker knife, then you're a very lucky person. Uh, one of my patrons, uh, Murray, has got one for his son. And I do believe knowing that it's his passion and he's so good at doing it. There is so much work that goes behind this, I won't even start to talk about the, the, whole, the whole process of the knife and everything because it's very scientific. He, he does everything to a T, but you know this is a, a very treasured uh, gift. I really am very grateful. I wasn't expecting that, Simon. You've given me so much. Uh, in his letter, he, he said that you know he's, he's a crap businessman and it didn't work out. Bro, you're not a crap businessman. You were let down by a few people, and I was probably one of them because you were giving them to me. And you're actually a bloody, you're a top bloke, mate. Anyway, big, big hearty thank you, and let's keep on opening stuff before I uh, get too overwhelmed. Unbelievable. Right, what well, this was also in the fridge. That's who this is from, man. Actually, I'm going to put the Japanese butcher's knife away. 
and I'm gonna open everything with this precision, very sharp field knife. Oh, this is from Jerry Osborne, Jerry. Jerry. I think Jerry is actually the person on the channel who has actually received the most hearts from me. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jerry, but I'm pretty sure you are. It actually is written on the back of what's in there. <laughs> Ken, it shouldn't have been in the fridge. Oh, God, I'm a dumb fuck, really. Thank you, Jerry, for sending this. Probably putting it in the fridge wasn't such a necessary idea. There's a card in there. I can feel the adrenaline in my body, man. Who needs drugs? A tiny little envelope. Look at this here. With a note. Hello, Clay. Fish fitting knife. Fix a float to the paracord so it can't be lost on board. Great idea, mate. I soaked it in Danish wood oil for 24 hours. It has made the blade stiff. Okay. You can choose to keep it or give it to a keen young fisherman or even to your girlfriend. Well, I know that Aoi likes knives. It is. It's, again, I'm fucking blown away. So Jerry, what could I tell you about Jerry? Jerry, uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Jerry, but was clinically dead at one stage in his life. He has been through the biggest uh, health challenges. Follows the channel. He's received the most hearts. He's been very helpful in his comments, and he's also been very critical, which I really appreciate. I appreciate good criticism. I'm... I'm always ready to be wrong and I'm always ready to improve myself and I have no problem if somebody criticizes me and it's a valid critique. One of the things he critiqued me on was my audio being too loud in my videos and and he also gave it a thumbs down, which he said I've given you a thumbs down. People that give thumbs down, that's okay, but people that give them down without stating why, that means they've got no testicles. This man has got, he's got balls, you know, he said I've given it that, and that's the reason why and I really appreciated that. You know, I really appreciate someone that can, can critique me. Um, the thumbs down don't help the channel much, but they, they definitely help me to get my act together better. Because if you stick a thumbs down just blindly, I don't know what it's for. Whereas this guy, and so I gave him a heart for that, and you know, he's one of my valued subscribers. I really, really value it. Anyway, let's stop talking and, and look at what's in the, in the package. Oh, it's an open L. So that's high carbon steel made in France. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Look at this. It's an, it's an open L pocket filleting knife. It is a bit stiff. You're right, Jerry. It is a bit stiff. Now I understand what Jerry was talking about. The wood where he's put the oil has swollen up around the blade. And I, I've got it. It's not that bad. Um, got it open. But here we have a filleting knife. It's a pocket knife but also a lock one. So the oil that Jerry's put on that to protect it has made the wood swell a bit, so this is a bit too tight, but I'm gonna work that with a pair of, like a pair of pliers and just back and forth a bit. In fact, you don't need to lock it because it's actually very, it's locked up pretty tight anyway. A fantastic gift, which I'm gonna use all the time, mate. I eat a lot of fish. I've now got some wasabi to have with my fish. It's a very, very thoughtful gift, Jerry. Thanks a lot, mate. I really do appreciate this and uh, man, I hope that my videos have brought you some joy because you've definitely brought me some joy. I'm going to close them up and yes, I will get a float for that. What a fantastic, fantastic gift. And a lot of thought gone into it. Awesome. Right, we'll move along. This is from, well, it's to me, Play Talk Stories. It's from Darren Adam. I don't know what it is. It's a little bit exciting, isn't it? I'll read the note first. Hi, Clay. The net is for catching herring piper. It is legal to use in New Zealand. Cool. I know you will put it to good use. Also, the nuts I bought for myself but didn't realise they had pepper on them, which I can't eat. So you can have them. Thanks, Darren Pierce. I hope to meet you someday. I hope to meet you too, Darren. We should make that happen, mate. So, um, what have we got here? 
Well, these are the nuts you could make because they got uh, pepper. As I have just had my one meal a day, which is uh, some steak and vegetables. I've broken my fast. I can still eat. I like to eat within the same hour, and it's only just finished that. What are these like? I can taste sugar in there. Yeah. Coated with peanut, sugar, cashew, seasoning, salt, pepper. I'm sugar free, bro. So I can't eat them, but the thought really counts. But I know someone who can that'll enjoy them. My son's coming today. So they taste delicious too. Uh, but I don't eat sugar. So it's got floats on the top and weights on the bottom. Thank you very much. I'm going to put this outside my house houseboat where the herrings are. Look how fine it is. It's just so fine. It's a herring net. Wow, and tiny wee floats on the top. That is awesome, bro. Oh man, people are just so, so cool, eh? Fucking unbelievable. Really unbelievable. What a, what a fine part, man. Thanks, thanks a lot, Darren. That's, that's brilliant, mate. Your name's down on the GBC. What, what else have you got here? This comes from Hastings. This knife is just magic to hold, Simon. It really is. It's just a beautiful um, balance to it. Razor sharp, so you'll be so careful with these. He just makes this, I don't know how he gets his knives that sharp. Because he's a craftsman, he just knows how to get his angle dead right. I'm sure he's got some sort of method because they're just razor sharp. Look at that, they're just like, bang. Dang. Doing an animal with one of his knives is an absolute pleasure. Hi Clay. Nothing big in here, just a new knife for a young chap who lost his out hunting. Oh mate, that is going to go to Spencer. He is going to be so stoked. Thank you very, very much. Also a bit of dark chocolate for the boys when the energy levels uh, bell rings. Uh, and a few key rings. Your channel is very inspiring and uplifting for me. Uh, you have refocused me after my battle with ill health. Well, I know what that's like, mate. I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. It's been a good kick up the ass. Would love to have a good chat one day. Too right, Gary, mate. Well, you're a pat patron as well. Thanks for being a patron, mate. It really helps. Oh, that is nice. I like that sheath. Oh, I like that nice and deep. Oh, mate, it's a victory stick knife. Victory's, victory's made in New Zealand. Very, very good steel. Great, great knives. And look at this, it comes with its own steel. I'm going to have to give um, him a, a lesson on how to use a steel. Some steels are good, some aren't. Some stuff the blade, some don't. I'm not going to steal it because it's a brand new knife. It doesn't need to be steeled. It's razor sharp. That is an awesome gift. Thank you very much. You are sorted now. So, young Spence, who I've been taking out for six months, he was really excited. We had a farm that another one of our patrons, uh, Jason Luckman, was going to uh, let us hunt on in Murchison. I was all keyed up. I'd done all the work with his social work and everything and got all the galleys out of the way. And it was for a Saturday morning hunt. And all of Friday, I was in really bad shape. I had a lot of pain and I... I got virtually no sleep and I got up in the morning and I threw up and I just felt so bad. I just hurt so much and it was like, time to go back to the doctor. And I had to ring him up in the morning and tell him, hey bro, I'm sorry, the hunt's off. And he wasn't like, oh, that's okay, Clay, I, are you okay? He was just like, mm. <laughs> just all he could think of was he wasn't going for a hunt. At you know, that age, that's all you are thinking about. Um, so... I think this will make up for it. Spencer. It's going to you, bud. We'll get out and get some blood on this. I promise you that. Okay, thank you very much, Gary. That's awesome. Right, we'll move along. And uh, there's another um, parcel here, which is also uh, in the same packaging. And it's also from the same place. Is this also from you, Gary? Or is it just Concert Eagle? It's from the same, I think it, I don't know. Let's have a look. I'm gonna crack that open find out very quickly. Oh, such a sharp one. 
another knife. Hi Clay, here's a spear knife. You never have too many, Gary. <laughs> you fucking beauty, mate. Too right, you can have too, never too many. Look at that sucker. Look at that. Look at the blood beating on it. That's, that's a stick knife as well. So when you put the knife on your belt, like so, like this here, I'm, I'm guessing this, I don't know, but I'm guessing you can also go around your leg, you know, like to keep it to keep it on nice and firm, so it's not when you're running, which is a bloody good idea, like that. So it's it's beside you. What a what a smart idea to have on any knife. Because one of the things is your knife does get thrown around a bit. So this is going to go into the boys' room right now. We have got a place where we put knives for boys, and I'm going to stick that in the in the room later on. And it's going to go to some young fella at some stage who just doesn't have the opportunity. Don't write and ask me for something. I have quite a few people saying, "Hey, can I get a knife off you?" No. Everything that people send to us is for the young fellas that I look after. Uh, so please don't ask for stuff. It's dedicated to guys that don't have fathers, um, that have had a rough start in life, whether it's through illness or circumstance, whether they've been adopted out or they're, you know, their father's been killed or murdered in some cases, or they've come from a really bad background. That's the sort of guys I take out. I've been doing it for the last 20 years, and that's the sort of guy that will be getting this knife. Okay? Right, we're on to the last one. Sam Horswell in Australia. How you going, Sam? Mate, thank you for taking the time not only to give something, but to pack it up, pay for it. You know, just the postage alone would have been expensive and that. That would have cost a lot of money, um, really. And that is very, very generous of you to, 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 you know, to do that. I know myself, because I, I send our CDs and our merchandise to Australia, so I know how much it costs to send stuff. Right, uh, this is the last thing today I'm opening. And... Um, I just want to say while I'm doing this, please uh, only send me something if you're in a real position to. My needs are met. I, I really aren't needing anything myself personally. Uh, it's, it's great when people do it. Holy shit. Mate. Look at these lures. Perfect time of the year. Oh, mate. You beauty. Oh, mate. Well, here's the most popular lure for catching, for catching kahawai. Those two there's a trout one on the bottom, although you catch kahawai on that. Those two there are what we're using right now, and that's, a, that's probably about a 40 gram you sent. I haven't got the glasses on, but I'm guessing it's about a 40 gram. And why this is a good lure is because of just the sheer weight. I haven't been able to get these. You can cast them out. I'm, yeah, I'm not using about a 20. That's about a 40. Bro, and all the swivels. Of everything in here. What a good bastard, man. What a good bastard. Really? Look at these here. Is that focusing on there? Can you guys see that? I'm going to just like touch it a little bit and see if we can focus a bit. They're for trout. Although you will catch a kahua on that too. Oh, bro. This is part of what's in this box. A little tackle box. So it means when I go out, and I do take the young fella out, then we've got some extra gear. Uh, probably next year I'm going to be taking up their own son because he's coming back to stay with me. Oh man, people are just too much. Hey! So what we have here is we've got three Japanese whetstones. We've got a 3000 grit, a 400 and a, a 1500. And we've also got, I believe it's a diamond, uh, a, I don't know if we can call it a stone or just a diamond surface 400. And this is what I use for doing all my knives. I use uh, Japanese, I use sharpened stones. Very, very uh, expensive and very useful. There's a letter in here which I uh, will read to you, but before I just want to open the last thing up here, which is likely to be a knife uh, because it's wrapped like knives get wrapped, so they can't possibly do anything. Wow. Oh. Beautiful. 
Beauty. So, you've got your beast. This, this is Gerber. You've got your beast. You're in the bush. You want to cut the brisket. You want to cut a leg. Anything bone, you can go through with that. And they are brilliant. Not bad steel either. Very, very useful. Something I've never actually had, um, but really good to carry. Oh, <laughs> two knives. Well, let's look at this one first. Can somebody read that? I can't. I'm terribly bad at reading. Um, don't have a lot of education under my belt. A nice wee knife. Oh, it's Winchester with a gut hook. And it's got his initial on it. So it's been his own knife and sharpened well. A great, a great knife to take out in the field. You can cut the arsehole out, throat the animal, uh, skin it with that even, and you can bone out. It's a good all round wee field knife. So we are going to give this also to another young bloke at some stage down the track that will go to the boys' room. Very thoughtful, thank you. This one here, this is this is a this is, looks like a stick knife. There's the old look at that. Oh, that's a stick knife, all right, yeah. That is Spanish steel. Now, well, it's a beauty, and it's bloody sharp, mate. You sharpen that up before you center. That's really sharp, shit, yeah. That's razor sharp. It's Spanish and it's scorpion. I think you say mula. Well, that is sharp and just like touching it. Hell, that's a heavy, a good stick knife. Okay, for another young fella. Please bear with me with my crap reading, folks. Uh, I'll do the best I can. Clay, how's it going? I hope you have a use for these few things. I follow you on YouTube. After subscribing to Josh James on Patreon during my rehab last year. So I was in rehabilitation last year too, bro. We were in rehabilitation at the same time. And good on you for being on his, um, Josh's Patreon, mate. That's, that's awesome. Oh, I'm not yet subscribed to yours. Um, and don't do it uh, uh, only unless you really can afford it, mate. So just hold off there. Hold on to your coin, yeah? Uh, I'm not subscribed to yours. But after watching your vids and see what you do with young fellas, I take my hat off to you. Awesome stuff. I'm ordinary from South Canterbury. I've got a lot of mates down there. Uh, uh, Wade Waller, who my dogs come from. Richard Ware, who's uh, one of my real, um, he's, a, he's a top pig hunter, uh, mate. Uh, Stephen Davison. There's a whole lot I could go on and on. Um, got a lot of mates and I'll be doing a trip down there because I want to go right down and see Stu Dreaver and a few other people. I want to go hunting with Richard actually uh, when I'm fit and well. So, um, where was I? I'm originally from South Canterbury and live in Perth now. What's that like living over there, mate? In Aussie, eh? After New Zealand? Um, the pig sticker was a 21st present back in 2002. Wow. So he's giving his 21st birthday present to Clay Talk Stories team for a young guy. What a, what a top bloke, eh? Top fucking bloke. Really, I'm... Get quite emotional reading this, I really do, man. It's like, fuck. Dogs having a scrap out in the box. That'll do! Calm down, Big Z. They need a walk. They need a hunt, actually. Didn't get away this weekend. Whew, I'm a little bit blown away. Okay. It was a 21st present back in 2002, which was christened on a 179-pound boar, which I insisted on carrying out in the snow. Now, I have had a 179 pig on my back. My biggest pig was 180, and by the time we finally got it back here, we weighed it in the PS. It actually lost lost, lost the pound. It was, 100 and, it was 180 and actually lost a pound during travel. Don't ask me how that happens. It, it, it did, because we used the same scales at both ends. And when we, It was 180 when we got it there. When we got it back here, or back at the last place, and we weighed it, it had lost a pound in travel. Um, I know often pigs gain weight after they've gone off the hook and they've been cut up. People talk about them, that's a talk story. So I know what it feels like to have that sort of weight on. Uh, however, I failed. I, I went a few uh, meters and I collapsed and uh, was lucky I didn't bloody drown because I collapsed in a puddle. Anyway, different story for another day. Uh, 170 pound boar, which I insist on carrying out in the snow. That would be hard yakking. I got shown the ropes by my good mate, Millsy. Millsy. So, okay, I know who that is. Mills, if it's the same one I'm thinking of, and we did a few hunts with Richard Weir. Well, that's my mate and his whippets. Okay, so I just said, that's okay, so Richard's a good mate of mine, man. 
Also, Grant Ray, who also I just banged into the bush the other day, his father was a fucking legend. Okay, this is all come to bits together now. Um, which is now back up your way. Yes, Grant is back up my way. I ran to the scrub just the other day. Very good pig owner. Also runs the same dogs as me, the Wild Terriers. I also spent two years on the West Coast at Taipatini. That's where my, my daughter is right now. Doing outdoor recreation, I worked at Rangatata Rafts before a snowboarding shoulder injury stuffed me. Welcome to the Fucked Up Club, bro. That's why I became a YouTuber. Ten years ago, I toured my Infospinatris, and I had to stop playing concerts. And if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't be talking to you right now, because I thought, what am I going to do? Crazy how our lives go in different directions. You think something bad happens, but it was actually a great, it wasn't a great thing, it was great, it took me in a great direction. So we have a lot in common, you and me, Sam. We've both got rooted shoulders. <laughs> and it's, it's a bastard eh? because they never quite heal. Okay. Where are we? I've lost what I was going to say. Um, love the bush and hope to get back one day. You will, mate. You will definitely get back. Even if you're really like, you know, life knocks you down, you'll always find yourself go back to the bush because that's where you do your healing and that's where you, you get in touch with yourself. It's, it's a magic place. This stuff has sat in Perth for... The past 10 years, not getting any use. After watching Spencer lose his, I figure, it is better getting some blood on it once again. Be good. If you can't be good, be careful. Cheers, Sam. Sam, you are a total top shelf good bastard, mate. Well, now uh, Spencer's got some choices to make, hasn't he? I think he's probably going to... Um, this, this, this knife uh, that you've seen has got some history. It's really got some history. Uh, and it's a hell of a, hell of a heavy knife. It's really, really a good all-rounder. That's about... A, Five mil or four mil blade. Uh, what I don't like about the setup on this here is they can come out very easy. I like shears that go a bit further. So this one here, I would be inclined to um, maybe change the sheath on it for a young fella. Spencer lost his last knife with a similar sheath, uh, whereas the one that um, he's been gifted, uh, this one here, has got the full sheath. So what we may do is we may set something up with this um, a bit more secure, uh, something that goes around it. I'm not sure yet, but uh, it's going into the boys' room right now with this knife and with that knife. Yes, one can simply never have too many knives and this knife. They are all knives for boys. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm not giving this one to anybody. I'm sorry. I'm keeping this one for myself. Hey, to everybody that uh, sent stuff, thank you so much. This has been so generous. I mean, look at this, really. I'm, I'm blown away. I'm going to go and put these into the, uh, the boys' room right now for young fellas. This good bastard's board sign came from Australia. Smash uh, bought it for us when he was over there. And if you look up here, the very first one was actually number one was Stu Driver. And the list just goes on and on and on. There's 65 on that. And there's a whole lot more down here. And we've got another board beside that too. Got a couple of bows. This one here came from David Vass, which he's uh, given me. I've... Uh, Bought this one here for young fellas as well. And over here in this corner, we've got boots for the boys, plus another two box of boots. So we don't need any more boots. As you can see, the knives are getting really low. This, uh, this is actually one that I made, which is made badly um, with a deer I shot a while ago. And this is a Shelly Raskin one, which is uh, not doing much. And this here is just a bare blade, uh, which was used for testing. Uh, Simon Walker, when he made the last uh, prototype, he sent me a bare blade just to test it to see if I could snap it. And I didn't want to snap it because I knew it was strong. I wanted to keep it and maybe one day shape it and make it into a knife. Because it's the, it's the same steel, the good steel. So we're actually out of knives. So that's where our knives are going to go. I really like the idea of having one uh, strap that goes around your hip. It's uh, Sam's knife that he blooded on a 179er. This is the knife that's going to be going to Spencer. That's a beautiful knife, mate. Victory, very uh, top quality. Uh, another knife for another young fella and uh, my knife is not going there it's going in my own personal hunting stuff so that directly behind me is a tree hut that I started building for Dayla nearly 10 years ago and then I had that accident where I, I tore my shoulder and it never got finished and we've got the, the timber all lying around the place to finish it but it's just one of the jobs that never quite got done because of that accident and poor Dayla you know she always wanted that now she's like she's a woman she's like 19 uh, this is the wall here which is supposed to go up so things come along in your life you don't expect they, they knock you and something bad happens but like i said earlier on i wouldn't have the youtube channel if that had never happened so whilst data never got her tree hut um i'm talking to you guys and we're we're having a lot of fun so there's 
a silver lining around every dark cloud that comes into your life. Please don't send me stuff uh, unless you really you know, can afford to. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that have a lot less than me. Clearly there is. So think of them first. And thank you very much for those of you that have done that. I really appreciate it. I really do. It's, it's mind-blowing. Be good. If you can't be good, be careful. And we'll see you in the next Clay Tall Stories video. Right. Time to uh, do some tidy up around here because the place is a bit of a mess. This is going to be a bedroom one day, not too far away either, but it still needs work. This is all the kitchen stuff in here right now because yeah, right. we need to put it somewhere. I'm probably going to uh, put this out in the house truck tonight. Bye.